Price hikes ain't a secret no more. Your poop ain't secret. And NVIDIA secretly still on the gamer side. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host, and I'm your beast guy. We'll be bringing you the hottest tech news that we can find out on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, December 5th, 2025. I almost said November. It feels like it. Oof, all right. Well, we're gonna feel some bad news because AMD confirming to Tom's Hardware that the GPU price hikes that we have been hearing about are indeed factual, with them confirming that it is a $10 per eight gigabyte price hike on the back end. So this is for the memory kit with the graphics cards that they're sending to AIB partners. So you might remember that we recently heard a rumor that Nvidia was decoupling this yeah. so that they don't have to deal with the pricing at all. And AMD's strategy, however, is to just jack up the price, which likely means we're gonna see more than a $10 increase on the front end or more than a $20 increase for a 16 gigabyte card. So bad news on that side, but in case you were worried about the CPU price hike, AMD coming out and saying, no truth to that. That's not happening. It's cur all the prices are fine. Just chill, all right? It's it's okay. So no impending price adjustments for Ryzen processors. You're gonna be okay. So uh, you don't have to panic buy your CPU because I mean, you're not getting RAM for it anyways. <laughs> or an SSD at this point. So yeah. just relax, especially, you know, kick back, relax, watch some hot news with today's video sponsor. Make sure this, okay? You're stuck on a boss or a puzzle in a game. So you boot up the old answers machine. That's what I call browsers. And you leave that open while you read up on what you're doing wrong. Meanwhile, your game is struggling for resources now because your RAM is being eaten away at and you can't afford to upgrade. Lucky for you and gamers everywhere, today's sponsor, Opera GX, has the solution. With Opera GX, you can actually customize the amount of resources the browser and all your tabs are using up. So reading along on a quest guide won't turn your game into a slideshow. You can choose a set limit for both RAM and CPU usage. Another benefit of Opera GX is that it's not just a boring white screen with the search bar. With GX mods, you can really make your browser your own. Taking a gander at the GX store, you can see there's no shortage of unique and interesting mods. With these mods, you can change things like dedicated wallpapers, even animated or live ones that react to your actions. Background music. Keyboard settings. Custom splash screen, so even opening the browser feels like you. Custom UI fonts, custom UI icons, custom GX icons in the taskbar, and shaders that give your entire screen a cool effect. Now, I hear what you're saying. This all sounds nice, but I've got so much set up in my current browser, it would be a pain to switch. Thankfully, Opera GX has thought of this too. With the quick import tool, you can bring over all your previous settings history, bookmarks, and cookies. It even works with your precious extensions too. Just a few clicks in the settings and you're all set up. While we're on the topic of search history though, why don't you show everyone yours? No? Well, then you might also be interested in Opera's built-in VPN if you're so big on internet security. Not only does Opera's VPN provide added security while you're online, but it also lets everyone do their favorite thing watch region-specific content on your favorite streaming service. Right now, you can also get one month of VPN Pro for free with the code EGGPLANT through the end of 2025. With VPN Pro, you can secure up to six devices and gain access to over 3,000 private servers in over 30 countries. So kick back with some foreign shows, a quest guide up, and your game running strong when you download Opera GX via the links in the description below. Huge thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring. Well, you can also use Opera GX to go ahead and find out about the 98 50X 3D, which seems to be real more so than the price hikes for AMD CPUs because it's popping up in a shipping manifest already. We already saw it on a driver page over on AMD's website. Looks like that's getting ready for an imminent launch, probably after a CES announcement, which is happening in about a month. Yeah, no, it's that's... coming up real quick. And then yeah, new new chips for you. Or maybe, I doubt it's gonna be here before the holidays, usually from shipping manifest to retail product. It's, it's a little bit longer of a development. Time. Yeah, but uh, no news on the 9950X 3D two just yet. We're still waiting to hear about that one. And I wasn't waiting to hear this, but it's happening. Intel deciding that they are not going to be divesting their network and communications division. Interesting. Which is great news. 
great news. So it appears that all of the money they got from the US government and all mm -hmm. of the recent investments means that they don't have to get rid of their NEX, which is for their networking and communication, because they're saying that the business is best positioned to succeed within Intel and that keeping NEX in house enables tighter integration between silicon software and systems, strengthening customer offerings across the internet. We remain focused on delivering for customers and creating long-term value. The reason I'm so excited about this is that Intel's Wi-Fi is the best on the market, Yeah, right? It's banger. I, I constantly have issues with other laptop Wi-Fi cards. Like I've already had to replace one in my son's laptop yeah. since we moved here because his less than two month old laptop, I think it was a real tech Wi-Fi driver, just crapped out. And safest, simplest solution, pop a mm -hmm. Intel one in there. Their networking is just so good. And for them to sell it off would have been, I think, worse for everybody. So I'm glad to see that staying. And who's not staying is Amazon with the United States Postal Service. Ooh, right yeah, now. yeah. So they're announcing that <laughs> despite them spending $6 billion a year on the Postal Service, they are, no longer going to be doing that and they will instead be working on Amazon's own delivery service. How does Amazon work here in South Africa in terms of delivery? For context, when I moved here in 2015 initially, people were like, Amazon's gonna launch in the country soon. It's it was gonna happen. Soon. It was, yeah. it was gonna happen. For the Amazon real, Web Services has been here for a while. Yeah. Uh, so like they could just they could just launch it. And then fight was it this year or is it, was it last year? Okay, Amazon.co.za, you can buy things from them now. Hooray! It took forever, but it's actually here. And they're pretty decent. Uh they partner with the Courier Guy. Is That's that... like their their main Okay. I've only ever had from Courier Guy, and they're probably the best in South Africa when it comes to that. I've only ordered one thing from Amazon here, and it was courier guy delivery. Yeah, if I, if I order from Amazon locally, it's here by the end of the day, which is nice for South Africa. Okay. Well, uh, you know what's not nice for South Africa? Your deals. They get mad at us that we don't do local deals. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, well, here, here's some other ones. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bring the hottest tech deals on the internet, and here's your first deal. Starting us off, we have the Epo Maker and Ola collab with the F75. The 75% wireless hot swappable gasket mount mechanical keyboard going for $53.59, making it $26.40 off. But the next up, we have the gorgeous Lin Lee Landcool 217. This mid-tower ATX case is available in white for $103.49, making it $21.50 off. This was actually my top three contender for my recent build. And then lastly today, we have this TCL QM5K. This 50-inch 4K QD mini LED smart TV is going for $284.99, making it 365 days off. You could save a dollar a day if you grab this. You said it's how many days off? 365 days off if you saved a dollar a day. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm at to hand you off back to us. Well, Maurice, right, turns out that uh, you can get a great deal on a motherboard because it doesn't make a decision on what RAM you're gonna buy. So ASRock announcing that they have a brand new H610 Mambo that has both DDR4 and DDR5 slots included. So this can be a stopgap motherboard because this is for H610 would be for, I believe, Alder Lake. So that's the 12th gen, 13th, 14th gen CPUs, but it comes with four slots for DDR5 and two slots for DDR4. So that way, if you're transitioning from an older system, you can keep your DDR4 until 16 years from now when you can <laughs> finally afford DDR5. Right. So it's a it's a good move for budget conscious people who want to switch over to a, an old Intel platform. I mean, this is how I upgraded my PC. Not quite with the, the RAM side of things, but with graphics cards. I had one that was a dual AGP and PCI Express, and that allowed me to slowly upgrade my graphics card over time and still have a working system. You're old. I am old. AGP, goodness. Yeah. Most people watching this don't even know what that is. Good. Well, it's not good for the open AI folks, but I find just giddy to myself. I'm giddy. I, I feel glee at this. The IO item that OpenAI was supposed to release with the former Apple designer Johnny Ive has hit a roadblock when it comes to their trademark situation. Uh -oh. There was a lawsuit between them and another company called IO who works in wearables. And they were like, hey, you just, this 
It sounds alike, and it's not too far off from the spelling. This is a problem, and it mm -hmm. turns out that a judge is working on siding with them, with the judge saying that likelihood of confusion, very high. Reverse confusion, also very high, where because OpenAI is the bigger company, people will think that the smaller company ripped them off, and then there could be irreparable harm to IO's ability to uh, continue as a company. So, I don't know. I just, I find the decision to release physical AI hardware silly. Yeah. And so when it hits impasses because they didn't think through the logistical implication of their actions, I feel like it's just hubris manifest and they're uh, they're eating their just desserts. I understand why you were giddy. Giddy. That's, I got that, but what I'm not giddy about, but also kind of saw coming. Kohler, their smart toilet, your poop isn't end-to-end -end encrypted, but also not just your poop. They have a smart camera in there. It's all your bits. Your goodness. Mm, your danglies. Your danglies, because turns out that while Kohler says that they have end-to-end -end encryption when it comes to your poop bowl and their app, that's it. It's not consumer-facing end-to-end encryption. Like, it's a weird definition where it's like technically accurate, but also not the same spirit of what end-to-end -end encryption means, where like Kohler employees apparently could potentially see your details. And if they can see your details, then it also could stand that it could be put out there on the internet. And I gotta tell you, I can't think that that's a flattering angle for most people. You wouldn't want that published. No. Mm. No. Well, what's also a poopy situation is Asus's $4,000 ROG Matrix card not being able to be shipped. And we're just updating this story because Asus did issue an official response with them saying that the production and shipment are resuming and should reach partners soon and that there was a delay for product optimizations and enhancements. Something went brokey. Something went brokey. I mean, it's better that the $4,000 card reaches a consumer in a correct state, mm -hmm. but also, when this is like your flagship of your flagship, I think you owe your customers a little something, something. Like, I don't know, sticker pack? Yeah, I was about to <laughs> say something like that. I don't know, I feel like there should be like, make good on it. But you know who is making good? And this is shocking to find out. I was, I was just absolutely baffled by this news. Nvidia making good on something that pissed off gamers with the launch of the RTX 50 series. Now, you'll go back in hot news and you'll find that I, for one, poo-pooed everybody who was angry about this because I just <laughs> did not think that this was a big deal. But 32-bit physics support was dropped with the RTX 50 series with NVIDIA citing the development production. It's a very few supported games and it was so long ago and it takes development effort that it's just, they're gonna drop it from the product stack, which makes sense. 32-bit stuff is just falling off the mm -hmm. map in a million different places and NVIDIA has to pay those developers. And with people thinking AI is the way of the future, it just kind of seemed that's the way they were going. But no, turns out with the latest RTX patch, physics 32 bits back. I did yeah. not think that they would care this much, but they said that they heard the feedback from the community. And with the launch of our new driver today, we are adding customer support for GeForce gamers for most played physics accelerated games, enabling full performance on GeForce RTX 50 series GPUs in line with our existing physics support on prior generation cards. So the ones that they're confirming have the support, Alice Madness Returns. Again, you can see the list is small mm -hmm. and they're gonna be adding Batman Arkham Asylum in the first part of 2026. Very few games that AMD runs just fine. You don't need 32-bit physics support. Yes, technically, if you turn it on, it runs worse than a 40 series, but there's other cards that run these games. It's not like the game doesn't work. Yeah. It's just you lose this feature access because of development time. And turns out people made enough uproar that NVIDIA listens. I'm genuinely surprised. To quote Elf, that's shocking. But also with this uh, is the confirmation, as we talked about recently, that the end of the 900 and 10 series is officially here mm -hmm. with the launch of this branch. They're just not supported. Titan V also being dropped with this. This happened on Linux. Now it's happening on Windows. So you're no longer going to have official updates for those cards. But turns out that not every Pascal card is dropped because Pascal is the 10 series yeah. architecture. The MX series of GPOs on laptops that were Pascal still get driver support. That's interesting. That is weird. All right, NVIDIA, you do you. I guess. And Yins did Yins in the comments yesterday, so let's go ahead and see what you have to say. And Tron is <laughs> saying, oh Lord, now there are two of them. Two. Two. And then Jonah Photo saying, I've been using the Team Group brand for SSDs and RAM for a little while now, and I've honestly been happy with them. Still surprised that Micron dropped Crucial, though. It was a literal staple. Yeah, no. Yeah. I like Team Group, though. Yeah, that, they've been around for a very long time. I actually, I could be wrong, but I think the very first ch channel video for UFD Tech was my PC build to move here. And I think I used a Team Group thing 
I might be wrong. I can't fully remember. My okay. first build for the channel was Team Group RAM and a RGB SSD from them. Oh, yeah. Got it. 60. I think so. Yeah, yeah, that sounds mm. about right. Yeah. They've got a special place in my heart. Mm. And then Anthony C, 2159, saying, got a feeling that Brett hasn't played Stellar Blade because his wife won't let him. That is not the case at all. My wife and I's relationship is not so fragile that uh, she would think that I engage with animated women over <laughs> her. Like, it just, that's not part of it. I just legitimately don't want to be known for playing that yeah, game. Yeah, that's like, my barrier to entry is me. Yeah, he's not married. Yeah, like, <laughs> just like... We're both on the same page here. And then UG Fluffy Turtle saying, funny enough, I bought Stellar Blade last week when it was on sale. Great game so far. TDH, you don't have time to goon with how difficult and fun they made this combat. <laughs> It actually had me sweating hard on group and some boss encounters, and I was playing normal difficulty. Well, thanks for your input. I appreciate it. Maybe eventually. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I, I wanna, I wanna play it for the combat, but you know, I've got other games I have to play, and so yeah. I just keep putting it off. It's not high up on my lists uh, of games to get through. Yeah, and then we got Van Hoofenstein saying, "99 little bugs in the code. 99 little bugs. Take one down. Patch it around. 127 bugs in the code." That's how it goes. Yeah. So this is in reference to the UFD Music RPG that launched yesterday. Finally got it debuted. It was a whole whole mess. I hoped that I could get it done before the end of the workday. Reese, guess how late I was here working last night? I know. I checked Discord logs. I was here till 1 a.m. Yep, I saw. So, I saw. <laughs> uh, the game was in a shippable state at 3 p.m. Turns out that uh, all of the testing we did was with UFD Tech. Turns out that all of the API access stuff for Twitch was just a nightmare to change because I like built in this custom thing that like bypassed certain aspects and I forgot how I did it. And so I had to like rework it from first principles and then finally got that working. But then when I deployed it on the server, guess what? The way we access that server is with remote desktop protocol. Mm -hmm. And it turns out when you disconnect from remote desktop protocol, at least on the server we have, because it's headless, there's no video. The monitor deactivates. So then I had to set up a whole thing where I got VNC enabled and it, but like I had to talk to my service provider to enable the port forwarding to make sure that the uh, the 1100 port was working the freaking yeah. like it was just a it was a nightmare beyond nightmare and the game is working so as you can see they are fighting the super boss of mm -hmm. deal master assets work in progress but uh the game is functional there's some bugs i gotta fix such as every enemy cannot attack you because you have too high of an evasion stat and then uh the last hit xp isn't going through but in case you want to play it, twitch.tv forward slash UFD music. Uh, we're also giving away a 5080 PC over there. So uh, RPG, also the music, that's a big part mm -hmm. of it, is the music. The environments are supposed to react to the music. It's not quite there yet, but it's it was shippable. Yeah. So. Uh, Come be part of it. Yeah. And then Hector Barat saying, you can't be serious in reference to the comment that was about one thing that they, they don't know why. And I... Why weren't we serious? Like, I saw a lot of people upset that we didn't understand that that was a reference, and even after looking at it, I still don't get it. Me neither. What are you guys talking about? And lastly, we got Mr. Bubbles the Bot saying, Brett, what's your favorite Streetlight Manifesto song? Mine's A Better Place, A Better Time. Banger, good song. I think my favorite song by them now is As the Footsteps Die Out Forever. I know it's the Catch-22 original, but uh, I like it on the Keysby Nights re record by Streetlight Manifesto. As I've grown to be a parent, it's a, it's a special emotional place in my heart to hear a song like that. I get it. Do you listen to them? A little bit. All right, I'm not gonna ask, but we're gonna leave. See you back here for more of the Haas Tech News next week.